So guys, uh, Gordon here. Um, got a cool video here. Maybe I'll do a series of these passing on some of my tech tip wisdom, especially regarding old school guns, because I find there's a, a lot of people will say old school guns are a lot more unreliable than modern guns, and in some ways they are, but most of the unreliability in old school guns simply comes from unfamiliarity with how to build and maintain these guns. So today we're going to talk about uh, how to build and how to shoot a very fast mechanical autococker. Um, but first, uh, because we've been trying to do beer reviews at the beginning of each of these, um, I've got one of my favorite beers of all time. This is Surly Brewing Abrasive Ale. Uh, Surly Brewing is, a, is one of my favorite breweries here in the Twin Cities. Um, and Abrasive Ale is one that they put out usually in February. Um, end of January, and that usually lasts. It actually lasts a little a long time as a seasonal. Um, the uh, oh, it's just delicious. It is um, considered a uh, imperial IPA or an American double IPA. I guess I wouldn't call it an imperial IPA because um, I don't know. I I would call it more like an American double IPA. It's nine percent by volume, so it'll hit you hard. So watch out. I've had a few nights that uh, uh, get a little wild with the abrasive. <laughs> it is uh, delicious. The, the flavor is very hoppy. Um, if you don't like hoppy beers, do not get this beer. This beer is insanely hoppy. Um, very bitter, but um, like all the really great bitter, um, bitter uh, beers that I like. It's also complemented with a very good citrus, um, uh, a very good citrus flavor. It uh, it's it's about as in your face as an IPA could ever get. It's um, not for the faint of heart, but it is a, a really delicious. Um, they say that the uh, well, let's put it this way. I definitely think there's still some bacteria or hops or something still operating inside the can of this um, because the next morning when you go um, it'll be surly <laughs> you'll be surly <laughs> um, especially if you've had a night of just drinking abrasive mm. but it is on the whole one of my favorite beers ever brewed um, last year's was a little bit better than this year's, so all of you Minnesotans who are going to yell at me like, last year's certainly was better than this year's, I'll agree with you, but it's still absolutely delicious. So, if you get a chance, um, have a try at some Surly Brewing Abrasive Ale, and I just wholeheartedly recommend everything that Surly makes. Um, it's delicious. Um, Beer Advocate ranks this as a 98 out of 100. Um, just to uh, just to put that into perspective. Now, let's talk about autococker technology. Now, it's great because I see this on TechBB all the time. Kids asking about cockers and mags, and that's really great. Um, so I figured I would put this, uh, a series of videos together about um, cockers and mags and just kind of the technology that's involved. Now, autocockers. Um, were known uh, to be horribly unreliable for so long and they still don't have the reliability reputation that most other guns have and I think that's totally unwarranted. Um, this is mostly due to the fact that autocockers have been around since like 1993 or so, maybe even 92, and until 1997 they were horrible guns to shoot because <laughs> All, all the all the modern conveniences we have, like the hole through the body to adjust the lug, um, wasn't drilled uh, stock in them. The uh, the cocking rod wasn't threaded. The um, three-way collar, the th adjustable threaded three-way collar, wasn't threaded. Um, none of these like really easy threaded parts to uh, adjust the timing of the gun was uh, not threaded so you'd have to like set it very carefully and then put a set screw in just 
and hope it didn't move and hope in the next month and a half that didn't move because next time you pull out your gun it's not going to work again so there was that problem I, and WGP did a good job of taking what the aftermarket did and incorporating it into the stock gun um, and so that's why autocockers are known uh, to be very unreliable but frankly modern autocockers uh, any, any gun made after 97 or so or any gun made with 97 and up spec parts um, very reliable the next revolution after 97 was when when they in 97 they made like the vertical regulator standard they made um, uh, a decent trigger plate all those threaded things all those things standard on the gun and then uh, in 2000 was the next time they made things a lot of things standard they enlarged the front banjo bolt um, they shortened the back block to make it lighter and they did a few other things um, so 2000 was the other year you gotta watch out for or not watch out for it's like the other landmark year and then um, yeah th th those are pretty much the two years so mostly my recommendation is if you're gonna buy a gun buy an 80 and a 97 and after gun or even just buy a 2000 and after gun because frankly the stock guns after 2000 were really quite good guns. Um, so, building an accurate or a fast autococker. Now, I have a pretty awesome autococker that I love more than anything else. This is a Merlin body. Um, I right now pulled the cocking rod out of it so I can so I can just cycle her um, without annoying all of my uh, neighbors. And so. The first thing that people want to do with cockers is they want to fiddle with them. They want to mess with them. And frankly, most of the guns that you find on the market these days have been messed with. Parts on them are not stock anymore. And that is a, a key consideration when you're going and buying a gun. Because frankly, the stock components on the 2000 plus guns are really quite good. Um, but if you're going to change them, um, this is the order that I would recommend changing them or the priority so if you're gonna shoot fast if you want to shoot fast the thing to change is the three-way and the trigger frame if you have a plastic trigger frame get rid of it it's junk the first thing you need is a metal frame of some type benchmarks are the best this ANS quick fire is really quite smooth um, and hinge frames are on the whole substantially faster I'll tell you why or I'll show you why in a little bit but if you want to shoot fast, a hinge frame is better than a slider frame like this. This is called a slide frame because literally it doesn't pivot around any point. It just slides. Um, the hinge uh, triggers, the double triggers, are much faster. I'll show you why. The other thing to upgrade is the three-way. Now, this one has a very nice Oracle-style three-way, which is adjustable. That's the other thing that you need to look for adjustments on cockers are your best friends you want anything that and everything that could possibly be adjustable on a cocker because not only can you make your gun better and more suited to you and more custom but it's just way fun um, so uh, you want a trigger frame that has a backstop if you can this one has a trigger slop removal screw you can see it Ooh, you can see it right that right there right behind the trigger plate um, and, uh, and this three-way is adjustable which is great as well so um, you want a nice short throw three-way the stock three-way like I was saying is not that bad especially on the 2000 plus guns but the really fast ones are the shock tech bombs and the um, the angry three-way by WGP or bell sales sorry um, and that's about it I don't really like the die or the ANS or um, too many of the other aftermarket ones. I'd rather stick with the stock one or a shock tech bomb is the other big one. So um, <clears throat> this one has the, like I said, the Oracle three-way that came later on the mechanical Oracles, which I actually really like. I like the uh, front adjustment knob that allows it to change location so it matches your trigger frame better. So what you're going to do when you get your new uh, three-way is put it on your gun and you're gonna have to adjust this three-way collar see this guy that's that threaded collar I was talking about right there you're gonna have to adjust that so that when the trigger is in its neutral location 
obviously the bolt is being sucked forward and when the trigger is in its back location the bolt is back so on a slider trigger this means that this hose goes to the front of the ram and that the back uh, and that the front hose goes to the back of the ram for hinge frames that's the exact opposite um, that's not why they're faster that's just how they run um, because they actually push forward when you fire instead of back pull back on the timing uh, yeah on the timing rod when you when you pull the trigger so you want to set that up and and if you have an adjustment and you can use this as an adjustment as well you want to put the forward at one end of the adjustment so there's so it, uh, the motion of the trigger there's not too much extraneous motion forward and there's not too much extraneous motion backward this is where that adjustment comes into play you want a backstop on your trigger you want a front stop on your three-way between that and the threaded rod right here you should be able to get your, your trigger throw itself to be as short as the three-way will allow it to be the next thing you want to do then is obviously time the gun tr the traditional way with the lug I like to put the, the sear release close to the back of the trigger pull because when I'm shooting in game and my gun goes off that's when I know to pull my hand off the, or my finger off the trigger and if uh, if that's not near the back end of the of the uh, trigger pull then I end up short stroking so I never shoot gun, or I never set up my guns like that I always put the trigger or the the ball the hammer release point as far back in the trigger pull as I can and uh, that right before the kickback from the gun. Now the dangerous thing about that is eventually you can get to a point where you're kicking where the ball is being fired at the same time as the bolts coming back and that can be bad so you want to check for blowback the way to do that is to um, put your hand or your cheek um, near the feed port and then when you fire um, to feel if there's any air blowing up that way if there is then obviously you need to put the firing point farther forward Okay, so that's tuning the trigger. Notice how in this entire thing, I haven't talked about the RAM, which actually does the work, or the LPR that regulates the air through the whole system. Because by and large in a mechanical autococker, they are moot. Um, they don't actually change much. And so when you're building a fast gun, a fast cocker, it has to do with the trigger frame and the three-way. And matching that to your shooting technique, like I said, I always put the release point very far back in the trigger pull. And that's so subconsciously when I'm shooting and my gun goes off, I know I can pull my trigger or my I can let my finger off the trigger. So, <clears throat> like I was saying, the slider triggers are slower, but I think more fun. They have more soul, they have more uh, auto cockerness to it. And you can get going pretty fast. This technique, just holding it like a regular gun, it's honestly not too much faster than like a Tipman 98. Certainly nice to shoot, sh nicer to shoot than a 98 from both a kick perspective and from a trigger smoothness and accuracy standpoint. But is really not that much faster. This technique of shooting on a slide trigger. you can shoot a lot faster and that's just using your middle finger and then putting your uh, pointer finger up there this is my laning technique um, uh, but usually when I'm gun fighting or long range shooting it's just with the uh, just with the pointer finger now I'll show you I don't actually have a hinge trigger cocker but I'll show you why hinge triggers are so much faster that's because just like the spider you can put two fingers on the trigger and pull it you know like that you, you know you don't walk a trigger like that because it's gonna be too rough um, you're not gonna be able to walk it um, just period but <laughs> you can get pretty fast on that compared to this fast Um, you can shoot really effectively fast and that doesn't really lose you that much accuracy I mean that obviously loses you a lot of <laughs> accuracy and I would never recommend you would ever shoot a gun like that but that's how fast you can 
that's why hinge triggers are much faster. I actually used to have an old 2002 STO. Um, then in those days, refs would check for bounce. It was a mechanical gun. They'd be like, how in the hell do you shoot that thing so fast? Because I had a die hinge trigger and a shock tech bomb, and I tuned the shit out of it, and it shot amazingly well. Um, that gun was easily one of my favorite guns I've ever owned. I'm so sad I sold it, but I did... That's how I got my Silver Phantom was with that gun. So, yeah, two very, very great guns. But now I have this... Uh, this um, slider and I absolutely love it. So that's how you build a fast gun. It has to do with the three-way, has to do with the trigger frame. A good quality adjustable smooth trigger frame and a good quality adjustable if you can get it three-way. Um, as long as you have the three-way collar and a trigger stop you should be able to set up your gun fast but more adjustments obviously gives you more um, more things to tinker with. Um, so, let's talk about those other parts that I didn't necessarily talk about off the break. Um, the RAM. This is, on a mechanical autococker, all but useless. The, uh, the, um, the stock brass one that came on the guns since, like, 1995, the shorter one, um, is capable of 13 plus PPS. Um, so there's just no way on a mechanical autococker you're ever going to touch that. Um, some people talk about the larger diameter rams versus this is an ANS. This is a very small diameter ram. In theory, the small diameter rams are faster because they take less air to fill the volume, um, but they take more pressure. Um, the other theory, well, so then the bigger rams take less pressure but take longer to cycle. So I don't really, on a mechanical gun, you really just don't see a difference in rams and I definitely go with I used to have QEDs on this gun um, just because they were on my ram when I bought it um, but I took them off and put regular nipples on there because it smooths out the gun substantially um, the QEVs are faster yes and obviously on an electronic gun maybe that's useful um, that extra speed but on a mechanical gun it just isn't the LPR now this is an often misunderstood one um, honestly um, the stock WGP non-adjustable sledgehammer is just fine. Um, it'll work pretty damn good. The uh, adjustable ones, any any sort of adjustment there is nice because you can adjust how much force there is and if you really tune a gun well, which obviously my, my 2002 STO was tuned really perfectly, you could actually pinch paint. The, um, the bolt didn't have enough force to break a ball. It would bounce off the ball if it wasn't loaded. So that's pretty cool. Um, but it's uncommon and it takes a next level tuning ability. <laughs> so like epic mail time style, next level tuning ability. Um, this is actually my favorite LPR I've ever used and I've used the rocks, I've used the micro rocks, I've used the tickler, I've used uh, the ANS, I've used all these adjustable LPRs before. But this one, it, it's, a, it's the WGP bullet. It's the adjustable sledgehammer. Um, it is by far my favorite uh, LPR. There's like, they're bulletproof. Uh, unlike rocks, I've had like three rocks go down on me, PPS rocks. Um, they just, I don't know. They're, I'm annoyed with polymers for a lot of reasons, and that's one of them. Um, th it has all the these sledgehammers all the way up to the tickler are part per part the same regulator. Um, just the tickler has a way, very sexy knob on the front, but I don't like having a, a knob there I'd, because I could hit it during a game and all of a sudden my gun won't recock and I have to turn it. So I always like the uh, the bullet style. They made a can style of the same type. This was the stock LPR on the I think the 2004 plus guns. So again. A great, uh, a great buy. Those 2004 plus guns are really quite good, um, and the uh, high pressure regulator. I do have a Palmer's um, low pressure uh, internals uh, regulator on this gun. Um, honestly, this regulator has as little to do with how the gun shoots as anything, like it, as as the body does. Um, it just makes sure that your gun's consistent. And obviously a clean regulator is better than a dirty one. 
Um, you can put just about anything on these. Most guns, though, run a little bit high for some of the new regs that are coming out. Um, most guns run at like 350 to about 450 PSI. So you're going to want to make sure that whatever regulator you buy, if you're going to buy an extra regulator, will go that high. Um, I've got the low pressure kit in this PPS and and it does pretty well. So the other thing that people will talk about is like bolts. Don't mess with the bolt. Who gives a shit? Um, if it's a Dalrin bolt, it may you know be lighter or whatever, but not a whole lot. Um, feed next is often debated. Um, only the STO style uh, bodies ever got threaded feed necks, like the carnivores the Oracle, the STO, the Black Magic, those bo those upper bodies, the regular ones don't have a threaded um, a threaded uh, feed port so you're gonna have to tape your loader which just involves what you think it does taping or sanding to make it fit nice um, that's an old-school trick so that's how you make a fast autococker and how you upgrade and tune a, a good gun. Um, there's plenty of timing videos, so I don't want to go through that. But like I was saying, when building a fast autococker, it comes down to the three-way and the trigger frame. It very rarely has anything to do with any of the other parts. And the name of the game is to set it up the way you like it. If you like a longer pull, then have a longer pull. If you like the uh, the hammer release point early in the trigger pull, maybe you think that you need to get that ball out a few milliseconds faster, then do that. But the way I do it, I like. Um, I don't know. <laughs> that That's kind of the cool thing about autocockers is you can tune them to be how you like them to be um, in a way that modern electronic guns just can't be built. Um, so, in conclusion, autocockers are awesome, and adjustments are awesome, and knobs that change things are awesome, and that's pretty much why you would want to buy and build an autococker. <laughs> Have a good one, guys.